Let me see if I can get it right this week. This is Friday, and all of the ice and snow has melted. It's going to be a beautiful day. Man Called Timothy. Only mentioned 24 times in 12 books, but he was a young missionary. Paul can't take all of the credit for having taught him everything, because we know that uh, if we were to look at his life, we would have to say from birth to 20, he was touched. He was touched by his mother and by his grandmother and their teaching of the scriptures. From 20 to 29, he was teachable. That's the time when he became a disciple and was mentored by Paul. From 30 to death, and we're not sure exactly how soon that happened, he was trustworthy. Now, that's not to say that he was perfect. It's very clear with the subtleness of the words of Paul that Timothy struggled, as all of us struggle. So let's take a look at his life and see what we can learn from it. He was touched because he came from a mixed marriage. His father was a Greek, his mother was a Jew. Uh, therefore, he really didn't have a solid faith uh, that could be supported by both parents. We can see how important that is uh, in the lives of our children. We also see that uh, he was taught well by his mother and by his grandmother. It was very noticeable to Paul when Paul first met him. He was a sincere person, uh, sincere in his faith. Uh, but it's quite clear that his real conversion probably came under Paul's hand when Paul truly brought him to a personal relationship. You see, it's possible to have a lot of head knowledge. That is all of that scripture that his mother and grandmother taught him. But there has to come a time when you move it from here down here to your heart. And that's what Paul finally uh, helped Timothy do is to move that knowledge into a saving faith. We, we know he was teachable because we see constantly Paul uh, teaching him and admonishing him and encouraging him and using him. And uh, we see that over and over again throughout the book of Acts. And as we look at the scriptures, we see what an incredible influence Paul had on Timothy's life. But also we see what an incredible help Timothy was to Paul. Uh, sometimes we forget about this uh, mentoring process and the fact that we should all have Paul's, we should all have Timothy's. But sometimes we need to realize how much Timothy's help us as Paul's. And so we see here uh, how much Paul relied upon Timothy, uh, particularly in First Timothy. Uh, you'll find over and over again uh, the fact that uh, Timothy is a great help to Paul and particularly towards the end of Paul's ministry we see that. It's quite obvious that Paul saw in Timothy a struggle. He saw a struggle over wealth. He saw a struggle over health. As a matter of fact, the one verse that a lot of people who want to justify drinking uh, will use is uh, from 1 Timothy 5.23, where a little wine for the stomach, uh, they forget that it goes on and says, and for your frequent ailments. Here, the wine was used in a medical sense for Timothy's ailments in his stomach, not uh, for drinking to get drunk or drinking as a recreational activity. It's very, very clear that as we look at the life of Timothy that Paul saw in him that struggle for wealth because he talked about being learning to become content. Uh, we see that he struggled with uh, the dangers of the ministry. He was not, Paul was not uh, careless about not telling Timothy what a tough ministry there was uh, and how much danger there was in the ministry. As a matter of fact, in Hebrews chapter 13, we find that Timothy was likely imprisoned for a period of time, and we see him being released there in Hebrews. What was Timothy's gift? Well, it was teaching and preaching. And so Paul, as he starts to wind down his ministry, says to Timothy, I solemnly charge you in the presence of God and of Christ, who is the judge of the living and the dead, and by the appearing and his kingdom, preach the word, be ready in season and out of season, reprove, rebuke, exhort, with great patience and instruction. Paul saw his ministry winding down and he realized that his legacy would continue through Timothy, and he solemnly charged him to be ready at all times to preach and teach the Word of God. 
and he gives one other warning that it should be a real <laughs> interesting warning to us today as we see so many of these uh, so-called churches that are uh, gathering large congregations because they're saying what the congregation wants to hear, not necessarily what the Bible teaches. Listen to 2 Timothy 4, verses 3 and 4, which follow directly behind that solemn charge. For a time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but wanting to have their ears tickled, that is to hear what they want to hear. And they will accumulate for themselves teachers in accordance with their own desires. Uh, these pie in the sky, everything's going to be okay by and by, and that distort the word of God and say that we have to change it and make it more relevant to the time. Uh, Paul was warning about the fact that this time would come a time when people would go around looking for preachers that would preach what they want to hear in accordance with their own desires and not what the Word of God says. Now listen to verse 4. And will turn away their ears from the truth and will turn aside to myths. My friends, the Bible says it. And the Bible's true, cover to cover. When we start to, to attack the Bible and pull it apart, and say some parts of it are true, some parts aren't true, and some parts are irrelevant then but are not relevant now. We are in very dangerous territory because the Bible is true from cover to cover. We can't change it according to what society wants. We've got to continue to preach it just like it's written. That's your thought for the day. God bless you and have a great day.